So, obviously, I think as has been made clear, we're on an expedited timeline uh, with these statutory speedy trial demands, and uh, the we are certainly here ready and willing to provide uh, both defendants that right, and we need we're going to plan to make that October 23rd trial date stick. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I don't know if we're always going to be able to have the luxury of. Uh, pre-hearing briefing and post-hearing briefing, and some of these issues may require a little more uh, exp exploration than others. Uh, this one, I, I don't think is one of those. Um, when it comes to uh, the question of whether to sever Ms. Powell and uh, Mr. Chesbro, uh, I certainly agree that there are always guardrails and that uh, RICO, uh, as indicted, can't just be used to, to do anything. But uh, it is broadly construed, and we do, those guardrails are found in those three factors. And the three factors traditionally that we've gone through uh, really don't seem to be at play here. Um, we don't, uh, for, for one, the antagonistic defense uh, issue is conceded. Uh, both parties are going to be claiming they have no idea who the other is and will be pointing the fingers at each other. I think the argument that they're charged in two separate kind of silos of charges uh, strengthens the idea that there won't be confusion amongst the jurors and there won't be spillover evidence. So really the, the strongest thing that I'm hearing, and I don't think it's invalid, is that it's going to be uh, kind of a matter of inconvenience and uh, potential added expense to have both uh, defendants sit together. And that's certainly uh, true, but uh, there's also other judicial economy aspects to consider and, and issues of, of inconvenience as well. We talk about the jurors. I don't think it's, it's we can take for granted that these would both be two equally four-month-long trials. Uh, I think it could easily be twice that with um, with multiple defendants, and, and I think we need to take into account the fact that uh, one docket goes entirely on hold while this case is going, and instead of it being, if we're purely considering aspects of judicial economy, which to me was the really the only valid argument here, um, I think taking up two dockets and uh, for a period of four months uh, also weighs into that as well as the voir dire process and the inconvenience to the jurors. Um, so based on what's been presented today, I, I, I'm not finding that severance uh, from Mr. Chesbro or Powell is necessary to achieve a fair determination of the guilt or innocence for either defendant in this case. And so I'll, I'll deny Mr. Chesbro's motion to sever from Ms. Powell. I'll deny in part uh, Ms. Powell's motion to sever from Mr. Chesbro and the plan will be to enter a scheduling order for um, Ms. Powell mirroring that of uh, Mr. Chesbro with the October 23rd date holding. Uh, it sounds like the state is still sticking to the position that all these defendants should remain and they want to address some of these removal issues. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to hear that. I, I remain very skeptical, uh, but we can, um, I'm, I'm willing to hear what you have to say on it. And so, but again, because we're on a limited time frame, I don't think we have the luxury of, of, of waiting. So how long do you think the state needs to respond to that issue?